Out with Henry Morgan. After the sacking of Santa Paula, Henry Morgan decides that he will punish Jeffrey Hunter, so has him brought to his cabin. In vain, Jeffrey tries to tell him the truth, but Morgan refuses to believe him until he learns that Spanish ships are waiting for him at the mouth of the river. To discuss means of overcoming this trap, Morgan calls together a meeting of his captains, and they decide to send an abandoned ship with sails fully set, laden with gunpowder and a fuselet, in amongst the Spaniards. The next morning... Jeffrey, together with Morgan, watch this plan put into operation. The chosen ship bravely sails alone into the midst of the enemy and then explodes, setting fire to the other ships and throwing them into confusion, during which Morgan's fleet sails safely away. Later in the day, Morgan tells Jeffrey that because of certain information he has received, he wishes him to go as his spy to Spanish Cuba. But, Captain Morgan, I... There are no buts. Either you wish to do it or you do not. What is the task I have to perform? What do I have to find out? Have you heard of the city of Panama? Of course. When the mayor of Santa Paula was eagerly giving me information as to how to save himself from further torture, he babbled on about the wealth of Panama. He told me the city is bulging with jewels and gold. But Panama is inaccessible as far as you're concerned, Captain Morgan. To reach Panama, you've got to sail around Cape Horn. Why, it lies across the isthmus on the Pacific side. Yes. The Spaniards think that Panama is safe from roving buccaneers. It's a mistake they make sometimes. They thought Santa Paula was safe from my hands. But it would take <laughs> months to sail around to Panama. And if the loot's in Panama, why ask me to go to Havana? Well, although the mayor told me quite a lot, it was not sufficient. He told me all he knew. He was only too eager to. But to sail for those months around Cape Horn... It's an impossible task. I have no intention of sailing around Cape Horn. There's a quicker route across the isthmus. You intend going overland to yes. Panama? Yes. Yes, why not? I'll train the men to do it and we'll succeed. But the way lies amongst swamp and fever. There's death in every hand and every form. Some will die, but many will return. And what do you want me to do in Havana? The mayor of Santa Paula told me there's a fleet being assembled at Havana. A fleet which will sail round the Horn to Panama to load the treasure and take it back to Spain. I want to know when that fleet leaves Cuba. I want to know when she's well on her way, sailing south. As you said, it'll take some months to sail around the Horn to Panama. And during those months, the Caribbean Sea will be free of Spanish ships. I'll be able to move a faster fleet to the mainland and march across, sack Panama and return while the Spanish ships are still rounding Cape Horn. Havana must be full of news regarding the sailing date of the fleet, and I want somebody there in Havana who will listen to that news. You speak Spanish? I want you to take the job. Of course, you know what discovery would mean. At their kindest, it would be just death. So you now fully believe my story, Captain Morgan? You trust me once again. I believe it, yes. But upon reaching Port Royal, I'll verify what I believe with Sir Thomas Moffat. If you've lied, I'll know how to deal with you. If you've spoken the truth, you'll be fully recompensed for what I've done to you. Thank you, Captain. And I've told you these plans so as to give you time to think over my proposition. If you decide to accept it, you'll have to leave Port Royal practically immediately upon our arrival. I am Captain Morgan to see you return safely. I hold grave fears for you after what Hunter told me. I'm relieved to hear from you, Sir Thomas, that Hunter has spoken the truth. I regret very much that I mistrusted him. But after all, the plot was so cunningly made against him, it seemed that he must be guilty. There was never a word or a sign as to where the woman went with my necklet. There hasn't been a sign of her or Kitty. Nor has there been a sign of Diaz since he deserted from your ship the night you sailed. Well, this is one time that I must cut my losses. The Aztec necklet is evidently not for me. But who knows, one of these days on one of my raids, 
that Spanish spy and I may meet. And I think that then she will have regrets. Um, yes. Well, that is another matter which I have to discuss. What? Your future expeditions. During your absence, Morgan, I've received more pressure from England. Pressure to wipe out buccaneers. I thought you'd already done that by creating me a vice-admiral. Oh, that didn't hoodwink them in England. They tell us that raids on the Spanish possessions must cease. I'm sorry, Morgan. The matter's entirely out of my hands. You know, I shall be the loser by it, as well you know. Are you threatening me, Sir Thomas? No. Oh, I'm warning you, Morgan. You once talked of retiring. Perhaps it would be better if you decided now to take up a peaceful life. <laughs> they wouldn't dare touch me. I'm the most powerful man in the Caribbean. I'll not be dictated to by anybody. I'm Henry Morgan. Well, should you not take my advice, Morgan, I would have to arrest you for piracy. Ah, I laugh at you for your threats. You look after governing Jamaica, Sir Thomas, and leave me to take care of the Spaniards. Hunter, that you've decided to accept the task which I offered you. You fully realize what you're doing? I understand, Captain. After hearing your story from Sir Thomas, I could have understood you readily accepting such an assignment had your name not been cleared. But you've got everything to live for now. After what the from a Spanish woman who was masquerading as Admiral the Lacey did to me, I want to do something back to their race. I'm also keen to go for another reason. I have a strange feeling about Havana. Oh? What is that? Over there I may hear about the woman who was in Port Royal. I might hear of the Aztec necklet. And also I have a strange feeling that someday I'll have a meeting with Diaz. There are several scores I've got to settle with him. I doubt if I will ever find Kitty. But who knows, I could, I, I may hear word of her. So you see, I have several reasons, Captain Morgan, for going to Havana... Well, don't forget that I'm relying on you to return to give me the information which I so vitally need. I won't be taking any risks. I'm taking the Negro, a hero, with me. I, I want a companion, and he refuses to be left behind. Hmm. You have one serious disadvantage. You're so fair. You could never be taken for a Spaniard. I had already thought of that. At the moment, a state of war exists between England and Holland. I intend posing as a Dutch gem merchant who's come to Cuba with an eye to trade. Oh, an excellent idea. And being supposedly in the jewel business, I am likely to hear more readily the movements of the fleet. I shall give out that I am in the market for buying rare diamonds and rubies. And if the Spaniards are eager for business, they'll willingly tell me the movements of those ships. Uh, an excellent plan. I couldn't have thought of a better one myself. Can you and Hero sail tomorrow night? There's nothing to detain me in Port Royal. But, uh, have arrangements been made for getting me away from Havana? The ship that you sail on will return at night to the spot where you were put on shore exactly seven nights after you land. You will have, Hunter, exactly one week to get the information. With all those Spanish ships in Havana, Cuba will be a hot spot for a British ship to linger about. The ship cannot wait for you in the vicinity of Cuba for more than one week. I see. And should you not be at the appointed place at the appointed time, the ship will sail back to Jamaica without you, believing that you failed in your mission and that your identity has been discovered and that you are lost. So remember, unless you make that appointment and you're still alive, there will be no means of your returning to Jamaica. I see you are not taking a risk in losing the Aztec necklace again. You wear it nearly all the time. After the fight, I had to get it back. I am not going to chance the losing of it again. Dolores, what is the matter with you these days? You seem to be bored all the time. You no longer go out and mix with the society of Havana. All the time you stay about home. I find Havana dull and stupid. 
I want again to live an exciting life with danger, like it was in Port Royal. Ah, do not mention those dreadful days to me. I was all the time wondering if you were alive. Oh, but you have so little faith in me. That was living. Oh, and now to come back here to an idle life of social rounds, balls, routes, afternoon tea parties. Oh, bah. Do you not wonder I get tired and sick of it all? Dolores, you should have been a man. What a leader you would have been. What a fighter against the English buccaneers. Ta, ah, when I think of Morgan escaping the trap which was so carefully set for him, I could have sworn we would have been successful. But no, no. The archfiend himself sent the fire ship in amongst our ships and destroyed them. Once more he is free to roam the seas. In Spain they have complained to England about those buccaneers. And England promises they will be wiped from the sea. But what happens? Morgan goes on putting his fingers to his nose at us. But someday, someday we will find him. Someday someone will be able to tell us his plans. And the next time we learn them, we must make sure he does not escape. And the, the last it was to us, Santa Paula destroyed all our treasures taken. Spanish ships blown up and sunk, and Morgan goes laughing on his way, working hand in hand with the Jamaican governor, Sir Thomas Mutford. Sir Thomas Mutford. My dear Uncle Thomas, as I used to call him. <laughs> he was so simple to hoodwink. They all were, especially the man, Jeffrey Hunter. Oh, he is dead now, of course. Father, I have just remembered something. What happened to the real Antoinette de I had forgotten her. I suppose she is in prison still. I gave orders that she was to be well looked after, and her uh, well, very existence went from my mind. Her youthfulness is over. We have no need of her now. But she was very beautiful. You had better sell her on the slave market. She will fetch a high price. And so once again, Jeffrey Hunter is sailing into the lives of his enemies in Havana. How will he fare on the island of Cuba? Listen to the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan.